Yeah, that's a fairness. Okay, so I tend to fidget as well, and I like that lady's idea of sitting on this chair and just tossing the cards. So this is how we're going to do it. So, got them. I'm ready. Ready, video man. Okay, so you all might not know this scene, but this is Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, this is where I was born and bred. And at the ripe old age of 23, I graduated from college and I wanted to take adventure by the hand, right? I wanted to get out of Kentucky. And so I decided I was going to do that through service. And I applied to AmeriCorps and landed myself in a backcountry trail crew for six months um, with the California Conservation Corps. Uh, and I think it's really important to let everybody here know that I had absolutely zero experience camping, backpacking, uh, dealing with bears, um, or slinging a tool. So I learned a lot. Uh, this is my crew that I spent six months with. Uh, this is our first six weeks together in Humboldt Redwood State Park. Uh, during this time, I spent a lot of my days in very dense, lush, wet forest. Um, I also learned how to use tools that I'd never seen before and experienced acute muscle pain in areas that I did not know existed. Um, so all work and no fun makes a trail crew really cranky and boring. So on the weekends, we would go for very non-relaxing, grueling backpacking trips. And I learned very quickly that in Northern California, bears exist on the beach, um, not like in Florida. Once we worked in Humboldt, we moved on to Tahoe, and I just really learned to embrace the dirt. Um, I kind of I gave into it. Um, and I finally felt like I came into my own, and my muscles were finally strong. I knew the tools, and my boots were finally my best friend. After hanging out in Tahoe for a couple months, we moved to our high elevation base camp that was 10,000 feet um, up in Ansel Adams Wilderness, and I took all of my experiences and honed them and became a really dirty, dry stone mason. After that, I came home to Kentucky, and I thought, oh, I don't want to be here anymore. I need to get out of here. Where are those mountains? And so I decided to take a new challenge, and I applied for a position in Alaska, and I ended up working for another organization called the Southeast Alaskan Guidance Association, short for SAGA, which it was. <laughs> I spent the next two and a half months uh, trading my trail tools for chainsaws, and so I ran a thinning crew with 10 hormonal teenagers in remote Alaskan islands. After that, you can see me in the green hat. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> so I went home to Kentucky for one last time. I loaded up my dog. I sold all my gear, and I headed to Northwest Youth Corps in Oregon. Um, and I spent the better part of the next five months leading crews in Washington and Oregon. After that, I went on for some more lovely torture and fun and adventure and ended up in Flagstaff, Arizona. Uh, I led a crew in Flagstaff, a crew of 10 for a year. Um, and these were no longer teenagers. They were young adults, fresh out of college, also wanting to just take on the world and see new adventure. Um, I gave up my trail tools again and ended up running a chainsaw for the better part of the year. Uh, which was very educational. I spent a lot of time doing hazard tree falling, uh, doing a little bit of trail work in the Grand Canyon, and just really hardening my skill set with my best friend, Chainsaw. After um, the Chainsaw times in Arizona, I moved on. I decided that I didn't want to be a crew leader anymore. I wanted to step it up a little bit. And so I became what's known as a woods boss. And so I basically managed 120 youth and about 20 staff for six months and assisted them in technical training, trail work, here are all the kids, um, one, one crew's worth, so 40 kids and eight staff circled up at a weekend campsite um, where we just kind of recreate and have fun and I load them up with all their tools and food for the following week. Um, this is in Oregon. And then after that very challenging experience, I decided to take a break for a little bit. Um, myself and my um, new kindred spirit, Patrick, and our two dogs loaded up our vehicles, sold all of our life's belongings, and 
drank a couple beers, looked at a map of the country and said, Colorado, Colorado looks like the place to be. So we headed to Colorado where I spent the next, goodness, three years um, running a professional trail crew with the U.S. Forest Service and also running a youth expedition program um, called Deer Hill Expeditions where I traded the tools and worked behind a computer for a little bit, organizing things. So after a couple years of that, I really missed the sun on my face and the wind in my hair and the dirt underneath my nails. So I gave up that computer and I went back to the saw. Um, and so I ran, <laughs> I ran a saw crew for a short time. Um, and then I ended up back with the Forest Service. And I worked for two years um, as the trail crew leader in Sedona, Arizona and building trail and on the weekdays, um, specifically a lot of mountain bike trail where I hardened a lot of dry masonry stone skills and worked with these two great men for two years in Arizona and also was a remote backcountry ranger um, where a lot of times I just kind of poked in on people's camps and said hello and <laughs> packed out a lot of trash, which you don't see here, <laughs> uh, which is great. And there's another slide that's coming up in a few seconds. And here we are. <laughs> um, so really, again, trying to hone those dry masonry skills. We have a nice rock saw. We split this big rock. And we are on our way to build a project with a youth corps. So all the while, even with the Forest Service, I continued to work with youth corps um, in Colorado and in Arizona. And um, as most federally funded seasonal jobs, they come to a close, they lose their funding. And so myself and our two dogs and my partner, Patrick, um, decided to head to Chattanooga. That's where our compass was pointing us. And so now I'm here uh, and I'm starting a youth conservation corps called Southeast Youth Corps.